All right, please let me have the book of Matthew. Please. Let me have the book of Matthew chapter 1. Uh, I'm just trying to give you a, just a gist of what I gave to the morning people before I take you to the next level, okay, for the afternoon, because I have a different packet for you. But let me give you a gist of what I gave them this morning, and then I will take you through the next step, okay? Is it fine? Okay. The book of Matthew it starts from chap- uh, chapter 4, it starts from verse 1. There's no translator, so I'm going to go. <laughs> Charlie, I love that one. Because it's like always you're waiting for a translator, you know. Because it really missed me to flow. Now I understand Apostle. <laughs> then Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. To be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, cause this stone to become bread to eat. Cause this stone. To become bread to eat. Verse 4. And then Jesus looking unto him and hearing what he was speaking. He said it is written. That man shall not live by food alone. But by the every word that comes out of the mouth of God. That is what mankind is supposed to live on. Or to live by, to live through, and to live in the word of God. Why did I give you this chapter? Because my topic for today, which I've said it before, I'm going to say it again because for the sake of you and the Portuguese people. My topic for today is... Overcoming storm three times, not three times of storms, three times of life storm, or three types of storms of life. Three types. And the first type that I want to give you, type number one, I will give you today. That was from the after morning, and I'm going to give you your own, but I'm giving you this is storm through sinful. Life, storm, true, sinful life. We know that it's not only Christians that go through storm. We also know that those in the world, they also go through storm. Storm is not only for Christians. Storm is in the world. And as long as you exist on earth, you will go through storm. And the reason why the, Christ, the, the non-Christians are not able to overcome storm is because, one, they don't know God. Even though Jesus died for the church. No, he did not die for the church. Jesus came to die For the world. So the reason why they are not able to overcome storm. That they are depressed. That they are causing suicide. That they are causing that and that and that. Is because they don't know God. They don't know. Let's make it. They don't know the word. Because the word is God. And the word is life. So the reason why the storm is on top and they are here is because he is not with them. That's point number one. Now, the reason why Christians also are able to overcome storm because Christians also have storm. Now, this corona didn't only come to the world. 
It didn't only affect the world, it affected the Christians. It affected the church. It was by God's grace that we are still meeting. It's a storm of life. Corona is a storm. It's a hindrance. It's a blockage. And that's the plan of the enemy. To hinder you. To hinder the church not to come for fellowship. Not to hear the word of God. And once we, we are not able to receive what we have been receiving, it can cause a lot of problem. It can cause depression. It can cause separation. So that is the plan of the enemy. So, the reason why most Christians also, do you know that you can, you can stand in the Lord? Hmm? You, can, you can be in the Lord, but you are not also believing the mighty power of God. How many of you know that? <laughs> You can, a, a Christian who has received salvation can stand in the Lord. But doesn't believe God's mighty power. So, so the reason why some of them are not able to overcome storm of life. Is because they have also not believed in the word. So my first point of giving you this is the storm through sinful nature, sinful life. Now, let me just express and give you a uh, open up for you, for you to know what I'm talking about, the sinful nature. If you don't believe in the word of God, you have sinned. How many of you know it? So, the things that, the storm that you and me are going through, or we face, or the body of Christ faces. It's not the fault of God. Even though sometimes we know that God is in. But it's not the fault of God. It is the fault of your sinful life. Because if you don't believe in the word, it means you don't believe in God. And if you don't believe in God, you have sinned. That means if you don't believe in the word and you are going through storm because the one that will fight for you in the storm, through the storm, is the word. So if you don't believe in the word, you cannot overcome the storm. Because the word is faith. So if you don't have the word, it means you don't have faith. And if you don't have faith in him, it means you cannot overcome the storm. So the sinful life I'm, I'm talking about through the storm is a sinful life of rebellion. Rebellion can bring you into a storm. Rebellion brings you into a storm. If you rebel against your leaders spiritually, it brings you into a storm. Because when you rebel against your leaders, you are not rebelling against the leaders you see. You are rebelling spiritually against God. I will make some of you uncomfortable today. When you rebel against your leaders spiritually, you see them. But you are not rebelling against them because it was not them themselves that put themselves there. It is the word of God that came spiritually that appointed them there. That is why David could not touch Saul. 
He did not want to. Not he couldn't. He could have done, but he did not want because he knew the power of spirituality, the power of authority. He knew it. So he did not want to touch the anointed one of God because he knew that he knows and knew that when he touches the anointed one of God, even though the spirit of God has left the anointed one, it doesn't mean that he's still in the hands of God. The title, the authority is still on him. Even though God has left him. So when you tamper with him, you are in trouble with God. It looks like my topic is diverted. And that is God for you. Because I didn't, speak, I didn't have this in the morning. And you need to hear. By force, by fire. Once I'm here, you're going to hear it. So when you do so, when you, when, what did I say? What word did I use? No, what? Yeah, but what, what was, what was, what is the reason why? Rebellion. Yeah. When you rebel against your leaders, I don't know why I'm hammering on this, but let me just hammer more because I have to tell it. I have to, I have to break, I have to break the stone. Yeah, I have to break the stone. That's my Christmas gift, yeah. Those that are watching me, please. When you rebel against your leaders that God has appointed in your life, it will lead you into a storm. And if you are not careful, it will lead you into a storm where you cannot come up again. Do you know that the spirit of rebellion, you can acquire it. You know that. You can acquire. You can ask for it. It will come. Mm -hmm. It's better. The same way spirit of obedience is standing by the door, your door and knocking. That if you open, he will come and dine with you. The same way spirit of rebellion also is knocking at your door. He who hears and opens, I will come in and I will settle with that person. So you can acquire rebellion. And rebellion can bring you to a storm. And when you rebel against your leaders, which God has set them before you, do you know what is happening? You are rebelling against Jesus answered, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by the word of God that comes out of the mouth of God. So coming out from the storm is not by your power, but it is through the word. It is God that will take you out of the storm. But when you rebel against your leaders, you are rebelling against the word. And when you rebel against the word, automatically, you are rebelling against God. What is rebellion? Sit down here. No, I will not sit down. I will not sit down. I know where to sit. I have my place to sit. No, sit down here. No, I will not sit down. You got to shut up. No, I will not shut up. God has made my mouth to talk. Oh, you got to say this. No, I will not say that one. I know what to say because God has spoken to me to say this. Which God has spoken to you? Oh, God, God said to me, God said to me that I, I, should, I should do this. No, God did not speak to you. It was your sinful heart that is speaking to you. God has not spoken to you. If God has spoken to you 
And then you must also believe that God is speaking to your leader. Because God is not stupid. God is equal. God is not partial. Isn't that the word, Carl? God is impartial. God doesn't favor us other sides. If God is speaking to you, or if God can speak to you, my friend, then also believe that God can speak to your leader. Once he's your leader, God is speaking to him. Because you that is, on, you that is a common church member, if you can hear the voice of God, how much more the one that God has called spiritually to lead you. God is a God of order. So rebellion doesn't count in the, in the, in the, in the book of uh, uh, God's, God's book, God's pamphlet. Rebellion doesn't count in. And when you rebel, automatically, you will disobey. It's a package. When you rebel, automatically, you will disobey. You will not listen when they talk. You will do your own thing. If they say go, you come. If they say come, you are going. Disobedience. And when you start rebelling, disobey, you will automatically start speaking against your leaders and against your church and against everything. You will be a complainer. When you, are, when you rebel, when you rebel, the spirit of complaining enters in you. You complain about everything. Even when they are speaking right to you, your ears are blocked. You are thinking what they are speaking is against you. You change the topic to another level. It is your thinking, your negative thinking can bring you into a storm. Your negative thinking can hinder your blessing. And mind you, when you have this spirit, God is not with you. When you have that spirit, God will not be with you. And when you are rebelling, automatic, you will doubt. No matter what the woman of God says, you will doubt it. Is this from God? I don't believe that she's speaking. She's speaking from the flesh. This is not from God. Because the spirit of rebellion has entered. Obedience has followed. Doubt. Three link. Three twins. Rebellion, obedience, and doubt. These ones can lead you into life storm. To overcome it, you must believe the word. Because we have Christians that are holding on to God, but they don't believe the word. When God says that you are the head and not the tail, they don't believe it. That is why you are falling down. Because when God says that you are the head, you must believe God. He says you are the head. That means the storm that you are going through, if you believe that you are the head, the storm that you are going through, automatically that storm should be on top of you. That storm should be under your feet. Am I speaking? If God says that you are the head, now listen, the world does not know that they are the head. That is why when the storm comes, 
in the, to the people in the world, the storm is here. And they are there. They never rise above the storm. The storm rises above them. But you as a child of God, when you believe the word that says that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed, then you will be healed by his stripes. Oh, where is my healing? I'm still suffering. No, you don't need to see it physically. You must believe it spiritually and let it manifest physically. Because it is your spiritual belief that calls in the natural healing. Shall I say it again? It is your spiritual belief that calls in the manifestation of the physical manifestation. If you don't believe the spirituality, you will never see the manifestation physically. So when God says that, in Christ Jesus, you are rich. He said, oh, but my father, my mother, they are poor. Our generation, we are poor. Then you will stay poor. What did God say to uh, uh, Gideon? He said, I'm the least in the clan of Manasseh. No, God said, no, you are the man, mighty man of valor. He said, God, prove yourself. And then God proved himself. And then it got manifested. But you must believe what is spoken through the word. <clears throat> Storms from the enemy. That is your topic. The one I said to you was the one I said to the morning people. Now your own is storms from the enemy. Second type of life storm is storms from the enemy. <laughs> what are the storms from the enemy? Storms from the enemy is to blindfold you. <laughs> Yes, he's a liar. I think I even wrote it this morning somewhere. Let me check where I got it this one. Please, let me have... Let me have... Is this Second Corinthians? Is Second Corinthians... Let me have Second Corinthians 4, please. Chapter 4. And let me have verse 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And I told you once in the church here that this God, because this God is not living in the church. This God that we are talking about, the God of this age we are talking about, is not living in the church, which is the devil. The God of this age and of this world is living in the world. His idea is not to blindfold the unbelievers because the unbelievers are already his. Just for you to be sure, this corona that came was not only assigned to the world. The corona that came was assigned against the church. Always against the bride. Always against the church. This corona was assigned against the church. is to stop the Christians from worshipping God. If the enemy can blindfold you, can blindfold your spiritual sight, one, you will not believe the word. And you will not believe God. That's point number one. If you're right, write it down. 
if the enemy can blindfold you. Because here it is said, he has blindfolded the minds. Now, what is that mind? Let me explain the mind we are talking about. <laughs> the mind that we're talking about is the spiritual mind. Which is your spiritual sight. Which is your spiritual revelation. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Bible says in Joel, it says the lack of revelation. Lack of wisdom, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. My people, they perish. And that is what is talking about 2 Corinthians 4 4. Is the lack of knowledge to the unbelievers to distract them from coming to God so that they can be mine. They can be mine so I can work on them. Because when he can distract you from God, you will not know that what you are doing is wrong and you will still be doing it. And you think it's good. That's what the Bible is talking about. But he has not only come to do this for the unbelievers, he has come to do this also for the church. Because Corona was set into the world against the church. That you and me cannot come into the house of God and meet. Because the Bible says that where my people gather, I'm in their midst. And where two or three will meet, I'm in their midst. And what two or three agrees is established. So, the Bible, the corona did not want you and me to meet together. And you know that there is power in meeting together. See, sometimes when you are alone and you are praying, it's like, even though you know how to pray, but it's like you are not motivated. Except when you are a strong person. But when you are together, you feel the power of God. So that was the plan of the enemy, the corona. To isolate you from God's presence. And when he can isolate you, that is why it's good for you to come to church. That is why it's good for you to open your heart. Because it's like the topic has changed. Power has changed and God has changed the topic. And I love from how God works. Because I'm holding the paper, but I don't speak for the paper. I speak for what I receive. That is why it's good for you to open your heart and come to church. That is why it's good for you to listen to your leaders when they talk to you. Because a good father will give a good rebook and a good advice to a daughter or a son. That is why it's good that when you have both things in your heart, you must speak it out. Because this is when the enemy attacks you. That is why it's good. When you see things going on in the church, you come and you speak to your leaders. This is what is going on. I said you speak to your leaders. I didn't say speak to the church member. I'm going to say it again. I feel like I'm flying. Look at the time. When this message I'm speaking now, not the one I said before. Now, what is coming out of my mouth now is for somebody. Because it's only God that knows tomorrow. Yesterday. God knew today, and God knew 
what he has put in my mouth. And he knew that what is coming out of my mouth in this second service is for someone that is entering. That is God for you. When you are seeing things not working, listen, listen, let me tell you, I'm still talking, I've still not deviated from the topic goal because the main topic is, is, the, is, the, is the what? What did I say? Yeah. And then this one for you. Uh-huh. That's what I said. And I'm still in that topic. This is part of the storm of the enemy. Because if you come to the house of God, which is a place of spirituality, and you are seeing things not working, everywhere you go, if it's a section, if it's a meeting, if it's if a company, whatever it is, which is a group, there is always somebody leading. Am I speaking? If you come to our home, if I'm not there, mommy is there. We are the two of us. We are leading. So when you come to the home and you, don't, you see things which are not good in my house, it is not your position to speak to my children. <laughs> because what testimony here, she hears, she will come and tell us. Yeah. It is your ability to speak to us. We are the leaders of the house. The same way when you come to the church and you are seeing things not working. It is not in your capacity and ability and debility to talk to the church members. Because when you speak to the church members, you are bringing the enemy's storm upon your life. I'm going to say it again for the sake of those that are watching. <coughs> when you come to the church and you see things are not working and you see them, your goal is not to call a member of the church and talk to that person about the things that are not working in the church. It is your ability to have a meeting with your leaders. And having a meeting with your leaders is not to advise them. Because you didn't know go this side. Eh? Eh, it's getting better, I know. That's me. Because what I, the statement I made, I said, when you see the things that are not working, it's good to talk to your leaders. But when you are talking to your leaders, don't go and advise them. Because there is difference between advising them and talking to them. Because some of the church folks, we love to sit in before our leaders and it's like we are talking, we are advising them. You are complaining the same time and you are advising them. That is called abomination. You are bringing the storm of the enemy to your life. Because if you begin to advise them and they begin to talk, it means that what they are going to say, you are not going to take it. <laughs> yeah. Because now you are the one teaching them. But a student cannot teach the teacher. A student must be taught by the teacher. A servant that don't teach the master. Because a servant cannot be above the master. A servant can be like the master. There's difference between above and like. So, 
So when things are not working, actually, when things are not working and you are not able to talk to your leader, you are a gossiper. I'm going to say it again. And we are going to shut that door before we go home today. The whole message has changed, eh? But I like God. Yeah. If you see things are not working, I am doing something which you feel is not good. That is what you feel. And it's not good. Your feeling is better you come to me and talk. Oh, daddy, I feel this. So how is it? If I'm a good father, I will explain to you. I will not shut you down. But if you are not able to come and talk to me for what you feel, and you go to the next person in the church member to talk, you are a hypocrite. And you know that God doesn't work with such people. God automatically shuts your door of blessing. And when that one begins to come in, rebellion will take place. Because the reason why you are not able to come to your leader is because you don't want them to advise you. Or you don't want to hear what they are going to tell you. But if you want advice and you want to know the right understanding of what you are talking about, then go to them. They have more insight to explain to you than you going to a church member. And this happens in the house of God. The moment you do it, rebellion enters. And when rebellion has entered, disobedience comes in. And you feel that everything is good for you. Everything is working. But there's nothing working. Yeah. Because you have opened the door for these things to come in. So when I'm here and I release blessing and you have this spirit, the blessing that I release will work for everybody. It will not work for you. Who is giving the blessing? It's not me. It's God. Me, my own is that out of my mouth, boom, it comes. But what is coming is the spirit, with spirit of God. And that spirit sees. It sees. So when it sees you in that corner, it will just pass by and then go to the next person. Do not come to you. Because you are not good. Your thinking is not pure. Your heart is not pure. Your mouth speaks things that you don't have to speak. And so you see them suffering. Because when you understand the word of God and you love God, God will automatically take you out of storm. When the enemy comes like a flood, God will raise a standard against them. Listen. <laughs> Give me five minutes and I'm done. Five minutes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go off, go offline. Go offline. You said? Yeah, go offline, please. We release, before you go offline, we release blessing over you, those that are watching. May the Lord Almighty God bless you. May he open your spiritual eyes. May he open your ears for you tuning in. And we declare and we decree that every word that has come has gone forth. May it be a blessing unto you. May it be that whatever you touch, let it be blessed. May it be that every seed you sow, may you reap your harvest in the name of Jesus. May God 
protect you. May he guide your going out. May he guide your coming in. May he release his oil upon you. May you and your family, may you be protected this season. May this corona not harm you down. May this corona not kill you. Every attack of the enemy against your life, we decree, we declare that because God is on your side, he will protect you and protect your children in Jesus' name. We bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go offline.